where do we have? The CMA today explained why it reached a different decision on the ABK deal compared to the EU, saying that it will not accept Microsoft's 10-year deals as a proper remedy of their concerns. The EU Commission agreed the deal would give rise to competitive concerns. It actually wouldn't. There's no difference between the CMA and EC there, but the Commission has, however, concluded it's appropriate to accept Microsoft's remedy. They have their own test to apply, and they've reached their own view, and they're fully entitled to reach that view, but we remain the view from the UK perspective that it is best to cuckold companies and ruin innovation. So they're continuing with that. The statute clearly says the CMA decision to remand has to be made in accordance with the CAT. Ruling, if the CAT ruling is very strong, the case is effectively decided. So a remand is not terrible. It's just it didn't help Meta in the Giphy case where the ruling was purely procedural. Now there was a couple of other things here that I actually saw. <laughs> that's uh, that's not that's not very good. It's. Let's see there. It's really a good thing that the EU delayed their decision and announced it after the CMA's crazy decision. Now all other regulators will follow and the CMA is becoming more and more isolated. Things would have been harder if the CMA decision came out after the EU's decision. And this is the point, right? 37 or 38 states, member states of the regulatory body have passed this. The only few that are left is China, which is accepted to pass. The FTC, which says they're going to sue, but they, for the meantime, will push past the FTC and get approval. And then the FTC can uh, sue them in the six months ahead and try and do that and then get overturned. And at which point Lena Khan will lose her job for wasting taxpayers' money in the US. But... You know, the FTC is a foregone conclusion as well by this point. I'd be very surprised if something different came up. So the UK is literally standing on its own on this, trying to say that we are the superpower and we will do what we can. And it was something I read down here with Satella. Here we go. It's by Tom Warren. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella questioned on whether the CMA blocking Activision deal would mean Microsoft might sell Activision games in Europe and US, but not UK. Let's wait for it all to play out. That's crazy. Let's just see, uh, play this. Could country. you ever see uh, an age where you would sell the product in the US if it was approved, sell the products in Europe and not sell it in the UK if they didn't approve it? Let's wait for it all to play out. <laughs> Could you I mean, that's a big statement, right? I was saying that they're just not going to put Activision Blizzard games on Game Pass and just take xCloud off Game Pass entirely. So those in the UK will be shafted quite a bit with Game Pass Ultimate. But that is at the fault of the CMA and not Microsoft. I do not blame Microsoft for this for a second. They want the deal to go through. They will do what needs to be done to get it through. And if the UK is literally the only country out there that is blocking it, that's on the UK. The EU thinks the CMA has overstated Microsoft's 60 or 70% market share of cloud gaming. This is exactly what I was saying at the beginning of the video. There is a thing called Microsoft Rewards where you sign in and use cloud gaming once per day. Just by signing in and signing out. You, can, you only need to be on there for 30 seconds. That still goes towards statistics that Microsoft X Cloud is being used. And this is a double-edged sword, right? Because it kind of shot Microsoft in the foot. But are these people using it? Also, as far as the CMA is concerned, uh, and the FTC are concerned, Microsoft having xCloud as an add-on for Ultimate means that all 29 million people are using it. That's bogus. Then that's easily the same thing as saying that Luna has 200 million people using it because it's Amazon is attached to Amazon Prime. Why aren't they being uh, subject to any uh, regulation? Why aren't they being told that anything that goes on their platform cannot be put on uh, with a fee? They're being allowed to do it. According to ATFT, the CMA previously miscalculated financial model around Call of Duty. The whole thing around the CMA is just messed up. They have no clue what they're doing. They're in uncharted waters and they're just basically being either fed the wrong information or, like I said, let's plug big tech! The CMA's decision over the Xbox ABK deal is 
making a mockery of the UK's pledge to become a Silicon Valley in Europe and creating a headache for Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. I can see Rishi Sunak uh, actually over overstepping this in the future. Um, it's it's getting out of hand. Uh, I've seen tweets in which the CMA's leaders are accused of being in Sony's pockets. That was one of the things I said. Also, in light of today's parliamentary hearing, the CMA has not handled this case in good faith. It has made a blocking decision for the wrong reason, but they're doing it for glory, not money. Exactly what I said. They want to be the superpower and said to be, you know, be at the forefront in saying, we blocked big tech. Um it, it, it's silly. It's all going to come down to the cat tribunal. I still think that this still will more than likely go through. But I know this is going to be really unpopular. I really do. But I really do want to see the aftermath of the Activision Blizzard deals being blocked in the UK on Game Pass and xCloud being removed from Game Pass. I am actually, uh, I use xCloud every once in a while. I actually really like it. Um, I like cloud gaming. But if the UK really want to go down this path and block uh, their customers from accessing content, because that is basically what is happening here. They are going down the path of blocking their customers from accessing it. That's that's that. <laughs> Everyone's switching their Xbox country to USA after Microsoft pull out of the UK, thanks to the CMA. I mean, this will be a thing. And if my subscription works, I will do this without a shadow of doubt. I mean, if this actually works, I don't think it will. But if it actually works and it gives me access to the stuff, bye, UK. I'll even start by paying, giving my money to the US for my Xbox subscription. It'll be more valuable. The UK can go do one. Uh, and this is someone that lives in the UK, right? At the end of the day, I'm a customer. I go where the best deal is. The EU official states that the CMA may have overstated Microsoft's cloud gaming share when blocking. I mean, everyone is saying the same thing, and the EU is saying the same thing as well. The CMA is wrong. It is just wrong. A uh, solid thread on the UK Parliament's oversight hearing on the egregious CMA. I hope MPs like Bim Aflawami, this is the one that was actually questioning Sarah Cardell earlier today, are considering measures to bring the CMA back under direct ministerial control or to allow appeals on the merits to ministers or the courts. Because the CMA handled this so badly, it's just really, really bad. And this statement here from the European Commission, EVP Vestager, this is the one I was talking about when she was actually questioned, explaining, you know, what was the reasoning behind them passing. It's a very good response, and it puts the CMA to shame, and puts a bunch of the stuff that Lena Khan, who, in my opinion, has brainwashed the CMA, uh, to shame as well. Let's just check this out. This will be pretty much where I end the video, but just listen to what she's saying. Well, we, uh, we had a concern about cloud gaming. Which is, you know, we've all agreed that there was a concern for cloud gaming. That is a thing. Very nascent right now, but it will grow. And it is very nascent, so it's, it's it's at its infancy. It will grow. How much it will grow, nobody knows. There is no minority report here like the CMA has. I think they've just been watching that movie too much. But anyway, I'm going to let the video play out. And uh, we saw that none of the games that we're talking about here of uh, Activision Blizzard would be available. And that, of course, would be a concern. We were given a remedy. Uh, so a 10 year uh, license uh, for for free for existing and, and coming games now to be made available. So we think that this is not only sort of solving a problem, it's also pro-competitive. And, and that for us is a good thing. So that was enough to convince you on this one? Uh, well, it, it was enough, yes, uh, because this is not about uh, different procedures or a different sort of uh, uh, legal uh, bar that you have to climb. Uh, this is about a competition concern being solved so that a merger can go on. Is this perhaps a new phase in the regulatory work of the Commission where the Commission is becoming perhaps a little less strict? No, it is not. Uh, had we found a concern also, now as said, uh, cloud gaming is one to three percent uh, of the gaming market, so it's a small market. But had we found that a concern could not be solved, well, then the merger could not go ahead. And that's the key point here, right? If they found a concern and Microsoft's remedies were not, you know, applicable to this, it should be blocked. But 
the fact that they're giving all their games away for free as a license to any streaming company out there means that anyone, even you who is watching this content right now, could start up a internet-based streaming gaming company and get those games on your platform this second once the deal goes through. There's literally no reason why you can't have a full Activision Blizzard catalog on there, along with the Microsoft games as well. Now, to ask yourself this, will Sony put their games on their streaming platform? God forbid they will do that. That would be pro-competitive, right? But you would never catch Sony doing that. But, um, so, you know, that is way more anti-competitive than this. So, you know, good on the EU for actually, uh, you know, approving based on logic and the fact that they're looking at cloud gaming as part of the overall gaming industry and not as a separate entity like the cma did which is why they're so you know false in the way they're doing things and and that will go of course in in any other merger let me ask you about perhaps contacts you've had with your colleagues stateside have you had any sort of coordination when it came to this deal with ftc do you expect them to decide in a similar way to yours? Well, that I, uh, I don't know. Uh, we are coordinating uh, quite closely on the substance, uh, as we have done with, uh, with the CMA of the United Kingdom. Uh, so, of course, we, we know each other. We have been discussing theories of harm, to some degree uh, aligned. Now we have different uh, outcomes, but this is not something that comes between us uh, as uh, jurisdictions and as law enforcers. And just finally, what's your message to other regulators out there, to your colleagues out there when it comes to this deal in specific? This is in regards to the tweet that the CMA put out that I read at the start, basically saying that this EU is full of shit and that the reasons they gave for approving this were wrong and that the EU is wrong and that we are right and we are justified we are above the law we can do what we want and everyone should listen to what we're doing and the other 37 member states that have approved this are all wrong the UK is the only jurisdiction that is correct and everyone needs to bow down to us and agree with what we're doing that is what she's referring to here well, we have no messages to one another. If we need messaging, then we just, you know, grab the phone and make a call. Uh, here, this is merger specific. Uh, we think that we have a good solution, solves the problems and works pro-competitive since now a lot more games will be available uh, in CloudStream. And that's the, key, that's the key here, right? All these games will be available on the cloud. So... As long as you've got a good internet connection, you don't have to go to xCloud to play these. You can go to Boosteroid, GeForce Now, or any other cloud platform that you want to play these games. You don't need a £3,000 PC to play these. You just need a £10 or £15 subscription to GeForce Now, and you've got a 4080 powered graphics card running your games. And I can tell you from experience that GeForce Now runs like a dream. Perfect. I have zero problems playing any game I want on there. It is amazing. So, and that is my actual preferred streaming platform as well, not xCloud. GeForce Now is what I primarily use for most things because it's not just limited to Xbox games, which makes it more convenient because I can just jump between games. And the fact that it's going to have Activision Blizzard and Xbox games on there as well, even more diminishes the use of xCloud. Because for me, GeForce Now is kind of like an all-in-one solution whereas the xcloud if i'm using my game pass at the time then i will go through it through game pass but it will never be my first choice anyway that's it for this video it's gone on long enough let me know what you think in the comment section below this is my first video and it is a really big one but this was a really big topic i hope you've enjoyed it let me know what you think in the comment section below let's have that discussion love to hear your thoughts and I will see you in the next one. I may have actually split this video up into two, depending on how long it actually is, because it is a long video. But if I have, once again, remain legend.